10 Common Survival Tips That Turn Out To Be Harmful Number 1. Lower Abdominal Pain Everyone experiences abdominal pain from time to time. However, if the pain is severe and accompanied by fever, bloody stools, or bloating, you should consult a doctor immediately. Do not take painkillers or muscle relaxers. Doctors advise against this because eliminating the pain could cause us to miss the signs of potentially fatal diseases, such as acute appendicitis, bowel obstruction, or a perforated ulcer. Don't try to take care of the situation by yourself. Call a doctor and start treatment as soon as possible. Number 2. Snake Bites When we're talking about snake bites, most people are convinced that the first thing to do is suck the poison out of the bite. Again, we've seen it in movies, so we think that's what we should do. But this method doesn't help a person in any way. The same thing goes for tourniquets and ice. They are completely useless. So what exactly should you do in this situation? First of all, can you guess it? Call an ambulance as fast as you can. After that, lay the person down so the poison won't spread quickly. Clean the wound and cover it with a clean cloth. If it's possible, try to elevate the bitten area so that it's at or above heart level. If the person is unconscious, perform CPR. While you're waiting for the EMS to arrive, try to remember what the snake looked like. This can help them choose the right treatment. Number 3. Food Poisoning In the case of food poisoning, the biggest no-no you can make is drinking little or no water at all. Your system is dehydrated, so you need to drink more water, starting with small sips and then slowly increasing the amount. Water can even help you avoid vomiting. Forget about solid, spicy, sweet and fried foods until your system gets back to normal. Right now, you need bland foods like bananas, rice, oatmeal, honey or mashed potatoes. Don't make yourself throw up. Sometimes it exacerbates the situation. Another bad decision is to take anti-nausea medication. You should always consult a doctor before taking any type of medicine. Call an ambulance if your condition is getting worse. For example, you have severe stomach pain and bloody vomit. Number 4. Dislocated Joints Dislocations are really tricky because we can find out the type of a certain dislocation only with the help of an x-ray. That's why the common tip to try and put a joint back in place couldn't be more detrimental, despite what you've seen in action movies. Moving the joint can damage it, as well as the muscles, nerves and blood vessels surrounding it. That's why the only thing we can do is call an ambulance and not let the person move the injured part of the body. You can use any long, stiff object to bind the injured part and the nearest joints in order to immobilize them. Using a bandage wrap does a great job at stopping the joint from moving. If there are no suitable objects, then the arm should be fastened to the body and the leg should be pressed and tightened against the other leg. Do not apply bandages too tightly. It's not providing any extra help whatsoever, but instead restricting blood flow. You can also put some ice on a dislocated joint until ambulance workers get there. Number 5. Airway Obstruction If a person is choking, the best thing to do is perform the Heimlich maneuver, which is basically an abdominal thrust. To do this, stand behind the person, wrap your arms around their waist, and tip the person a bit forward. Then, make a fist with one hand, grasp it with the other hand, and quickly thrust it into the area slightly above the belly button. About 10 thrusts should do the job. A lot of people make the awful mistake of performing the Heimlich maneuver on an unconscious person. Do not do that. First of all, you need to call an ambulance ASAP. Secondly, lay the person down on his or her back. If whatever is blocking the airway is visible, try to scoop it out with your fingers covered with a cloth. If you can't see the obstruction, perform CPR. It can help dislodge the object. If you use the Heimlich maneuver on a pregnant woman, press a bit above the rib cage. Number 6. Burns Burn wounds are quite painful, even if they're just minor ones. 
Still, we'll start by precautioning you to call an ambulance if the burn looks pretty bad. If it's not, then the treatment plan is simple. First of all, if it's a slight burn without significant tissue damage, it's important to rinse the skin with water for 10 to 20 minutes until the pain subsides. Apply a sterile bandage and place some ice or anything cold on top. Aloe vera gel is also great for burns because it helps reduce pain. Under no circumstances should you pop the burn blisters. This can cause an infection. If you're dealing with a major burn, again, call 911 immediately. Until the EMS get there, try to elevate the burned area above the level of the heart if possible. Cover the area with a cool bandage. Rinsing severe burns with water isn't advisable. It can lead to a drop in blood pressure and decreased blood flow. According to the French National Academy of Medicine, natural mineral water also helps in case of burns. After you've done all that, just wait for a doctor. That's the best thing you can do at this point. Number 7. Cardiac Arrest This one is not to be taken lightly, so you have to act fast. Again, start by calling 911 immediately. After that, the most effective thing you can do is perform CPR. And here's the biggest blunder. You must not perform the same action for people of different ages. For adults, jump-starting the heart is done by placing two hands in the center of the chest and using your upper body strength to compress the chest to a depth of two inches. You should direct all the pressure through the heels of your palms. However, performing CPR on children requires a different technique. You can use either one or two hands, depending on the size of the child. And don't forget that children have way smaller chests, so the depth of the compressions should be no more than an inch and a half. While the American Heart Association recommends hands-only CPR for adults, it's not always the same for kids. So be sure to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation in combination with CPR. Do 30 compressions to two breaths. And finally, to resuscitate an infant, you should press with only two fingers in the center of the chest, and the compressions should only be 1 to 1.5 inches deep. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth is also necessary. Again, 30 compressions to two breaths. Remember that you can perform CPR only when the person is placed on a flat, solid surface. Number 8. Hypothermia Hypothermia is basically a condition that occurs when your body temperature falls below 95 degrees Fahrenheit. It happens because your body simply dissipates more heat than it absorbs. The usual symptoms of hypothermia include shivering, slurred speech, weak pulse, and even loss of consciousness. Without the right treatment, hypothermia can be life-threatening, so you need to be careful with your plan of action. The main mistake people tend to make is to rub the body vigorously so that the friction will cause the body temperature to rise quickly. Never do that. Instead, follow these simple steps. First of all, call an ambulance immediately. You can bet that this will be the first step of all these emergency situations. Secondly, place the person in a warm room and cover the frostbitten body parts. Make sure that the person is wearing dry clothes and wrap them up in warm blankets. You can also apply warm, dry compresses on the person's chest. It's also important to give them sweet drinks and a hot meal. And what's crucial is to never use alcohol to treat hypothermia. It dilates the blood vessels and leads to even more loss of heat. Number 9. Nosebleeds Our first instinct in this situation is to tilt the head back because that's what we were always taught. But this couldn't be more wrong and harmful. Tilting your head back can cause the blood to run back into the throat, which can lead to gagging. Again, the first thing to do if the nosebleed is really bad is to call an ambulance. Then, sit the person down, tip their head slightly forward to let the blood flow down, and pinch the soft part of the nose with your fingers for no more than 10 minutes. This can help stop the blood flow. If the bleeding doesn't stop, keep holding pressure for another 10 minutes. The person should also spit out all the blood so as not to cause vomiting. Do not clog the nose with cotton balls or tampons, another myth we've all been taught, because this can make the bleeding even worse. Just wait for the paramedic. They'll know exactly what to do if the previous methods didn't help. Number 10. Severe Bleeding 
The biggest mistake you can make here is using a tourniquet immediately. Tourniquets are an important part of first aid treatment for bleeding, but they're definitely not the first thing you should do. First off, call an ambulance. Then the most important thing you can do is stop the bleeding. So place a clean cloth or a sterile bandage on the wound and press it firmly to control the bleeding. Try to maintain pressure by binding the wound with a thick bandage and keep pressing firmly on the injured area. Another thing that can help is elevating the limb above the level of the heart to decrease blood flow. The next step after bandaging is applying a tourniquet. If the bleeding is severe, the tourniquet will definitely help control it. The tourniquet should be placed just above the wound as close to it as possible. Keep in mind the exact time you applied it, so when the ambulance arrives, you can tell them how long the tourniquet has been there.